Welcome to part two of our St. Pete Brewery Tour. We're Jamie and Skylar, and in part one, we visited five breweries near downtown St. Pete. And made some furry friends along the way. In part two, we'll visit five more unique breweries in the area. Now let's go get some more beer. In part two, we pick up at our third stop on day two of our brewery tour. Cage was our sixth stop overall. Along with Avid, Paw, and If I Brewed the World, Cage is one of four breweries in the Grand Central District, each of which are located no more than five blocks from each other. Cage offers 18 of its own beers on tap, along with a couple guest ciders and kombucha. Our flight here at Cage includes the Blue Rays, which is a blueberry pale ale, uh, kombucha brewed by Mothers here in St. Pete, which Jamie loves, Spottober, which as you may guess is an Oktoberfest, and Mango Bobs, which is a double IPA. And here at Cage, we also had to order a side beer, which is Queen Crush. It's a triple IPA. We also got some food here at Cage. They actually have a full-time food truck located on their premises. It's called Vanchetta. They specialize in porchetta sandwiches. This is actually the porchetta sandwich with mushroom. We also got a lemon bar. Cage has a very laid-back atmosphere and a bit of an old-school artsy vibe with its retro arcade games and numerous murals painted throughout the brewery. The outdoor area has a large stage, which frequently hosts live music, and also includes Cage's resident food truck, Vanchetta, which took up full-time residency at Cage in June of 2020. Their menu includes several types of porchetta sandwiches, along with burgers, smoked fish dip, and desserts. They also offer rotating specials, which when we visited included several German-themed items for Oktoberfest. Because we were having dinner here, we decided we needed a little more than a flight and got an extra beer. At Cade, Skylar and I agreed on our favorite beer, and that was Queen Crush, the Imperial IPA. All right, we've made it to Green Bench Brewery, which is number four for the day and number seven overall. It's probably going to be our last brewery of the day, which will leave us three left for tomorrow. All right, we'll see you inside. Green Bench is located in the Edge District, which borders downtown St. Pete. In its main tasting room, Green Bench offers over 20 draft beers, ciders, and meads. The brewery also offers pitchers of beer, and as far as we know, it is the only brewery in the downtown area to do so. Green Bench is named after the 3,500 green benches that used to line St. Petersburg downtown sidewalks in the early 1900s. It's conveniently located between the groups of breweries that can be found in the Grand Central District and in downtown St. Pete. All right, we're here at Green Bench, and this is the seventh brewery and also the seventh brewery that offers flights. So this will actually be beers number 26 through 29. Our first beer here is the Black is Beautiful Imperial Stout with vanilla and coconut. The second one is a Hell is Bach. The third is a Skyway New England IPA. And the fourth is the Turban 7 New England IPA. Green Bench has a second tasting room next door. It's a barrel aging facility known as Web City Cellar that specializes in mixed culture, sour, and wild ales. It offers an outdoor balcony and patio seating and shares the beer garden with the main brewery and tasting room. We had also planned on sampling some brews in the Web City Cellar on this trip. But after four breweries and four flights, we decided it was best to get some food, hydration, and sleep. At Green Bench, Skylar's favorite was the Turbine 7 IPA, and mine was the Skyway New England IPA. All right, that wraps up day number two and brewery number seven. We've got three more for you tomorrow, so we'll see you then. Hey everybody, it is a beautiful Sunday here in St. Pete, and today is day three of our brewery tour. We've already made it to seven breweries so far, which means we have three left to go. We'll see you at the next one.
All right, we've made it to St. Pete Brewing Company, which is our first brewery of day three and our eighth brewery overall. While all the breweries that we show you in this video are within a two mile area of downtown St. Petersburg, this is the first brewery that's actually in the true downtown area. We'll see you inside. This brewery is in close proximity to many of the best restaurants and attractions downtown has to offer. It's also the closest brewery to the new St. Pete Pier. They offer 10 beers on tap, many with St. Pete and Florida themed names, such as Banyan Blonde and Pelican Porter. All right, so St. Pete Brewing was the first brewery on our tour that did not offer flights. The good thing is they do offer half course on all of their beers. The first one we have here on the right is their Stout. The second one is an Imperial Mango Wheat. And the last one on the left is a Pumpkin Ale. Despite being one of the smaller breweries we visited, the tasting room felt very spacious and social distancing was not a concern. We were also able to catch the end of the Bucks game on TV during our time at this brewery, which was an added plus. They also offer several games such as Battleship, Giant Jenga, and Connect Four. At St. Pete Brewing, Skylar's favorite was the Drop Dead Gorgeous Pumpkin Ale, and mine was the Grateful Stout. We just finished up at St. Pete Brewing Company. The next brewery is just a couple blocks down the street, so we'll see you inside. At the suggestion of the St. Pete Brewing bartender, we took Graffiti Alley to the next brewery. The alley from 6th Street North to 8th Street South, between Central and 1st Avenue North, is full of amazing works of art. If you are exploring downtown, we would definitely recommend checking it out during the day. We made it to our second brewery today, which is Overflow Brewing. And one thing that differentiates Overflow from the rest of the breweries in St. Pete is that they seem to specialize in sour beers. Yeah, I think from our prior experiences here, about half of their beers on tap were sours. And we love sour beers, so we're looking forward to it. We'll see you in there. Overflow offers a chill, funky atmosphere with lots of eclectic artwork and custom Lego tap handles on each of their 16 beers on draft. All right, so we're here at Overflow and we're happy to hear that not only does Overflow offer flights, but they also offer flights of both four beers and six beers. We opted with the six beer option. So on the left here, we have a black IPA. Um, the next three are all sours. I don't know the names, but as you can see, they're all very different colors. Um, the fifth beer here is a Brett IPA, and the last one is their Porter. While they certainly offer the most sour beers of all the breweries on the tour, they also offer a variety of beer styles, including Pilsners, Porters, and IPAs. Overflow has a large bar in the middle of the tasting room with sitting areas on each side. One sitting area includes TVs, board games, and video games, while the other side is more set up for conversation. This brewery also appears to be fans of Dwight Schrute, which scored some major points with me and Skylar. At Overflow, Skylar's favorite was the Flaming Veil, vale, the Banana Pepper Goza, and mine was the Course Correction, the Elderflower and Dragon Fruit Sour. We just finished up at brewery number nine, Overflow Brewing. So that means we're heading to our 10th and final brewery for the weekend. So we'll see you there. We've made it to Cycle Brewing, which is our third brewery of the day. And this is our 10th and final stop of the brewery tour. So we'll see you inside. As its name would imply, Cycle is a bicycle themed brewery with a bit of a hipster vibe. In addition to its popular staples, such as Fixie IPA and Cream and Sugar Please, Cycle offers by far the largest selection of barrel-aged stouts of any of the breweries on the tour. Cycle was not offering flights at the time of our visit, but they were offering half pours. We opted to order four half pours. At Cycle, we tried the High July IPA, Cinnamon Hazelnut Barrel-Aged Stout, Joyous Almond Barrel-Aged Stout, and Ryrish Red Ale.
Although Skyler and I typically do not prefer barrel-aged beers, we decided to try two of the barrel-aged stouts. And we have to admit, we did enjoy them. The flavors were strong along with the alcohol content. Psycho Brewing has received numerous awards, including being named the number two brewery in Florida. And in 2019, it was number 19 in the world, according to ratebeer.com. While we did enjoy each of the beers we tried at Cycle, we ended up drinking a little more than we anticipated on a Sunday and found ourselves in urgent need of food and hydration. Or as Skylar likes to say, we had been overserved. At Cycle, Skylar's favorite was the Cinnamon Hazelnut Barrel Aged Stout and mine was the Joyous Almond Barrel Aged Stout. So we just finished with our 10th and final brewery on the St. Pete Brewery Tour, which was Cycle Brewing. I'm pretty sure she's also starting to get hangry, so it's definitely time to cut this thing off. We are going to hydrate and go get some food. Stay tuned because once we sober up, we're going to talk about our favorite beers at each brewery. After having some pizza, Skyler decided his favorite beer of the whole tour was still Queen Crush, the Imperial IPA at Cage Brewery. And I decided my favorite was the Coffee Stout on Nitro at Pinellas Ale Works. Overall though, we found beers we enjoyed at each brewery and had so much fun experiencing the unique atmospheres. The flight prices on the tour ranged from $7.50 to $12, with the most affordable flight option being at Three Daughters. We hope this series highlighted the variety of great breweries in the downtown St. Pete area and helps you plan your own brewery tour. If you have any questions about the St. Pete area, let us know in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe for more Florida and travel content. Whenever. <laughs> That's not weird. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about, and we're probably going to head off to the next brewery. Where are we even going? <laughs> You'll find out next. <laughs> all right. The Green Bench Brewery, which is number three for the day, and... No, it's four. Four.